All right, Psalm 22, let's call this week's set of lessons The Path, in keeping with the theme we've had since the beginning of Psalms, that there are times when we want things to be one way when they are really another three times in this week's set of lessons. The path or the way is going to be an issue and not simply telling us kind of Christian cliche, you should stay along the right path, but it's telling us the confidence and even uh, the sense of security and comfort that can come from following a well-lit path. Uh, look at it from this perspective. If you are wandering around in the dark in a place where there are no street lights in a sketchy part of town or a place you're uncertain, there is a level of comfort that comes when you can find a well-lit path in an otherwise uncertain circumstance. And that is what we're going to see in at least Psalm 23, the famous psalm that starts out, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But we're also going to see it in Psalm 25 and Psalm 27 again, emphasizing even more by the time we get to Psalm 27, the confidence that can come from having a well-lit path, especially one that God provides in otherwise difficult circumstances. However, Psalm 22 is going to start us off helping us appreciate the times of despair and uncertainty that can come along when our path is not so well lit in this Psalm that starts off, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from me? A portion of the Psalm that is actually quoted by Jesus from the cross, now being uh, worded or penned by David, who's going to go on to say, uh, day by day, I kind of grope for answers and night by night, I get no rest, reminding us of some of the uncertainty that plagued Job during his ordeal with loss of stuff and kids and honestly, support of friends and family. And so here, David is going to show us that Job is not the only one, as he goes on to say, but you are holy, and in you our fathers trusted, and they were not put to shame for putting their trust in you. However, I'm a worm and not a man, and the very people who might be able to understand David's circumstance seem to have turned on him, and they are actually much like Job, his source of grief and ridicule. And to make matters worse, David does not seem to have taken this role for himself. It was actually cast upon him by God, the same God. He started off the psalm by saying, why won't you speak to me and help me understand what is going on? As he is going to go on to say once again, please be not far from me because trouble is all around and there is none to help. As for his condition, he is poured out like water, a theme that we use for the first sermon in this run through the Psalms. We used it to say that, once again, the Psalms can be like a cool drink of water to those who are, in many ways like David here, isolated, but they can help us understand, wait a minute, there's somebody else who, even if they're not a real person who can uh, offer me some words of support, there's somebody else who has been through this and simply hearing those words, uh, they've been through it. And as the Psalm is going to conclude, they were able, even in the midst of their depression, to encourage others, wait a minute, as alone as I feel, the reality is I am not the only one, reminiscent of what we saw God encourage Elijah with when he was in the cave, where he thought he was the only one still serving God. God reminding him not only were there 7,000 who had not bowed the knee to Baal, indicating their disloyalty to God, there were also two others who were actually going to be able to help Elijah accomplish the work that seemed too heavy for them. However, back in Psalm 22, where David feels like he is poured out like water, he is going to go on to describe his enemies as being uh, roughly three types of animals, maybe four. Uh, they are like uh, strong bulls, and there are many of them in comparison to David, who feels alone. And they are going to be compared to dogs, who, if you ever watch the dog whisperer, who talks about how dogs are in their natural element, they are pack animals. So whether or not they are strong, their strength comes in their numbers. And once again, David is fighting this battle alone at this point. And more importantly, enemies that are likened to lions are actually mixed in with the group that has assembled themselves against David. As he is going to go on to say, be not far from me once again, as he appeals to God to help deliver him in this psalm that is going to say something akin to, I will tell of your name to my brothers in the great congregation, and it's not just them. All the ends of the earth will one day turn to God and beyond those who inhabit the earth at that time. He said that they are going to know in future generations all of the things that God has done. For those who, like David and the Christ who quoted this from the cross, felt afflicted and abandoned in their time of need. Understanding that when he talks about praising God in the great congregation, this comes near the end of a psalm where he started out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Reminding me of two things. One we call 
home field advantage in sports. It is that extra bump of energy a home team can get when they are fatigued, but the love from the crowd can give them what seems to be an extra boost of energy that you might not have on enemy territory. However, understand that what we are seeing here out of David and quite possibly the Christ is another level of maturity, understanding how much of the song talks about the way in which they are isolated and abandoned, not only by the people around them, but uh, by God, going back to what we noticed in Job as well, and understand how in all three of these, Job, David, and the Christ, there is another level of maturity that allows them to draw on the love that they have for the crowd to get the same bump of energy that most of us can feel in the love that we get from the crowd.